¿Qué pasó, mi gente? This is a video, a boxing video about the uh, analysis breakdown of Felix Diamante Verdejo, the top prospect of last year and to me top prospect coming up of 2014 with his impressive, impressive KO of uh, it was a one punch knockout of this guy named Lurado. Uh, some uh, Mexican guy knocked him out in 21 seconds last night with a powerful, powerful martial artist licking left hook. I mean, it was just beautiful. He, he just leaned back just enough, hit him with the left hook, down, down he went. I mean, he was knocked out cold. Like, he like five started him, you know, and he was just out of there. And Felix has that one-punch knockout power in the super featherweight division, and I believe even in the lightweight division. The kid is talented. He's only 20 years old. He has 10 knockouts. I mean, 10 wins with seven knockouts. Getting a little ahead of myself. Uh, you know, yo soy marico, pa que todo no sepa, wepa, you guys are not knowing, you know, ya tu sepa. You know, Felix is dangerous. He's explosive, but everything's calculated, and he reacts, and he has great reflexes, and, um, they say in the amateurs he was a uh, youth uh, Pan American uh, champion, and uh, I believe he did really, really well in the Olympic quarterfinals, Olympian, but he lost to uh, Vestel Lomachenko. I think it was like 14 to 9 on points, you know. But that's still nothing to be ashamed of. Look at Lomachenko, he's one of the best boxers right now, and he only has one fight, so. You got to tell me what you think about him. I mean, Felix Videjo is special. He can do everything, combinations. He has a great long jab, sticks that jab out there perfectly. Everything's well-timed, doesn't take unnecessary punishment. They're moving them pretty well in top rank, you know. They did, by the way, pay him $600,000 just to sign with top rank. Let me say it again. Six, six zeros. That's a lot for a guy that was only 18 years old at the time. That's a lot of money. But he's handled all the pressure well. He's representing, you know, like I said, mi gente so well. You know, all my Borigua people, you know, all my Tainos, he's, he's repping, you know, the whole island proudly. And uh, he doesn't get into any trouble, stays focused. And he's all about just promoting boxing wherever he goes. And, uh... I mean, you guys tell me what you think about it. I think he's special. I think he's going to be around for a very long time, uh, next 15 years. He's going to dominate boxing. I think once he learns English, he's starting to learn some English. And it's not easy. People think just coming over here and learning English is easy. But I know a lot of people speak English on the island, but I don't know. Like, I think he'll learn it pretty well in the next coming years. Similar to Miguel Cotto, but a lot of people don't know Miguel Cotto was born in Connecticut, you know, he wasn't even uh, born here, he was born on the East Coast and then moved to Puerto Rico, you understand what I'm saying, so, and uh, you see how he turned out, he learns English and Spanish, and he is, I think, think number three, right behind Pacquiao and Mayweather when it comes to pay-per-view buys and overall money and, and overall boxing success. So, uh, like I said, you guys tell me what you think about this guy. I've been watching him on TopRank.tv. So, if you guys don't know about it, it's T-O-P-R-A-M-K dot TV. That is a great way to see his fights. He's on undercards right now. Like I said, Bob Graham slowly but surely promoting him slowly, get, getting him the right fight, getting him the right good technical fighters to come forward. Like, he's getting people that... All right, come forward, of course, pressure fighters. We're getting people that box, too. It's not just all come forward brawlers. You know, people that try to survive, too. You need to have that kind of work if you're going to be successful in boxing. And he's getting that early in his career. I see him being champion by 21 or 22 years old. Next year, 2015, will be his year. And uh, I believe he's going to take over. You know, he's really going to do his work, and he's going to show people why you know, uh, Borigua boxers are going nowhere. A uh, guy named Machado was on the undercard before Verdejo, and he did a pretty good job. Got his opponent out of there with a powerful, I believe it was a straight right hand or a left hook or something. And 
the guy was knocked out cold too. Uh, there was another guy. Oh, what was his name? I can't really think of his name right now. I think it was like Francisco Vargas. He's like five and zero with four, a three knockout, something like that. That kid, or one and zero, one, something like that. And he got the kid out of there early with a one punch knockout as, as well. And I think he was like. Five foot ten and one hundred twenty six pounds, which is crazy. That's like up there with the you know, Carlos Mini Burgos, the Mexican guy from Tijuana. Uh, but like I said, I don't know how people be making that kind of weight. Me, I'm six foot, you know, and I make one hundred and fifty four pounds. And you see how lean I am, man. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I know there's no way I can make, you know, one forty seven. I can make one fifty four, but. It's just crazy. But you got to tell me what you think about Felix Diamante Verdejo. Is he the next Grand El Campeon? Or is he just going to be, you know, a whatever guy that's going to get knocked out and top range just hyping him up? I feel he's going to be, you know, the next Grand Campeon. He's going to be the next superstar from the island of Puerto Rico. Or as I call it, and all my people in the Yuri dialect, we call it. But again, you know, we don't we don't call it but we call it but again. But um yeah, I just can't wait to see him fight again and uh he's up there with Leo Santa Cruz. Next time I'm gonna do a prospect video coming up here soon. But uh like I said, do you think that his skills are overrated or do you think he's the real deal? You let me know in the comment section below. Peace.